TCS presents Penn State Football. Stadium in University Park, Pennsylvania. It's the Penn State Nittany Lions versus the Wolf Pack of North Carolina State. This game is brought to you by the Dodge Boys. If you have a head for cars, head for Dodge. And by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Real goodness from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Good afternoon. I'm Ray Scott. Max McGee is here with me again. Max, on the one side, great place kicker. On the other side, great punter. The kicking should have something to do with the outcome of this game. That's right, Ray, and especially on a windy day because punting is such a factor. Uh, North Carolina State comes in with probably the best punter in the country. Everybody knows the kicking of Chris Barr. So I think the punting and the kicking today will have a very much to how this outcome is today. Dave Robinson is down on the field with Joe Paterno. We go to Dave now. Hello, Coach. Well, Coach, here we are again with another offense that's averaging 400 yards a game, another great quarterback, and another superb running back, and a, a very experienced team coming into Beaver Stadium that's upset-minded. How do you handle all these factors week after week? Well, we're going to try to play our defense as, you know, as alertly as we can, as aggressively as we can. This is a great offensive football team we're playing today, and uh, I'm, I've got all kinds of respect for Bucky. I think Bucky does as many things well as any college quarterback we've ever played against. And I, I think we've got a real challenge ahead of us, but I'm hopeful uh, that we'll, we'll be all right. And Coach, is another thing. People are giving a lot of credit to Evans with his kicking last year and that big upset victory. How do you uh, envision a battle between <laughs> the day between Evans and Barr, if nothing else? Well, Evans is a great punter. He and Skildani are probably two best college punters I've ever seen. Uh, and, and that's going to be a factor in the game today. There's no question about that. Uh, hopefully, uh, maybe he'll kick the ball too far once or twice and we'll be able to get a good return. You know, that he has a tendency to kick his coverage once in a while. Uh, but that's going to be a factor, just as our kicking game with Chris Barr should be a factor in the football right. game. Okay, well, Coach, thank you, and hope you have a very good game today. Good. We'll have to be good today. We'll, Fine. we'll work hard. This North Carolina State offense has been described as potent and just about every adjective that can be used has been used in talking about him and one of the reasons Max is this young man quarterback Dave Bucky. I think that's right Ray. He does everything well. He throws the ball good. He has a 65 percent completion average and he's handing off to a young man Ted Brown comes into this game after the first four games of the year he only ran the ball once since then has made about 700 yards for a seven yard average. So that's Mr. Dynamite right there. And on the other side of the line with the task of trying to stop this very high powered North Carolina State offense the front four of the Nittany Lions and they've played well. They have right. They might even be very underrated on this team because Penn State defense this year has been the backbone of the, the whole uh, season and these four guys right here are the reason Ron Crosby John Quinn Ron Croder Dennis Smudgen and you put those with those linebackers behind them you got a great defense. I'm anxious to find out what Dave Robinson's thoughts are right now as we're very close to kickoff time. Dave? Hey, excitement is not the word for down here. As traditionally, the last game of the season for the seniors is always a big game because it's the last time they're going to play before the Beaver crowd, Beaver Stadium crowd. Also today, they have an opportunity to play against the same North Carolina State team, which upset them last year after a real close game in Maryland. I think the team couldn't be more excited. And uh, so it's going to be a great game, I'm sure of that. Now, we'll be right back with you after this word. Captain Buttle, Captain, we'll Buttle. Captain Quinn, Captain, Quinn. Captain, Rafferty. Captain Rafferty, 
Young man, you got it. Captain Higgins, Captain Buttle, Captain Surface, Captain Buttle, introduce yourselves, will you please, man? Introduce yourselves. You got any notice? All right. If you gentlemen will face this way, I'll introduce a fellow crew of officials. The back judges, Mr. Egan. The line judges, Mr. Stakem. The lines is Mr. McGuckin. The umpire is Mr. Gross. The fuel judges, Mr. O'Rourke. The clock is official. I have a coin. Captain Surface, you'll call the coin. I'll catch it. There's a head and a tail. I must catch it. Call, please. Tails. He calls tails. He calls tails. It's a head. And blue is one to toss. We will receive. They will receive. Will send that goal. Will you stand up there, please? All right, shake hands. Shake hands, fellas. Blue wins the toss. We'll receive. It's going to be down in this corner. I'll be that corner, right. Well, Max McGee, I can't remember any football season where the weather has been absolutely perfect for every game with the slight exception of the game with Syracuse. Cheryl will kick off for North Carolina State. Penn State having won the toss and elected to receive in the middle. Scott Fitzke. North Carolina State six wins three losses Penn State eight and one with a following win fine kick and Fitzke is not going to run it out so North Carolina State gets a good effort from their kicker Cheryl. Capacity crowd on hand once again. Penn State backfield will contain no surprises. John Andrus starts at quarterback. Woody Petchel at tailback. Dwayne Taylor, who missed last week's Maryland game at fullback. And the wingback will be Jimmy Cephalo. It's going to be Suey. This is a surprise. A change at fullback. Suey instead of Taylor, number 35. Cephalo went in motion, and Suey gets about two yards. Now let's check out the members of the Penn State offensive line familiar to many of you. Number 71 is Brad Benson. Number 72 Tom Rafferty. We're on the left side now. The center Ron Argenta. The right guard Mark Thomas. The right tackle George Reiner. Marvin Chack and Cephalo are wide to the left on second and eight. Petzl. Woody comes off the weak side and gets it out to about the 28 yard line where Ron Banther the defensive right end made the tackle. Woody Petchel Ray is the leading ground gainer for Penn State and he seems to get better every week. And you're going to see a lot of him today. Two tight end offense Stutz will stay in number 89 and Mickey Schuler number 82 is also in there on third and two at the Penn State 28 yard line. We'll set the defense in a moment. Cephalo is not able to get the first down as Tom Higgins the fine middle guard number 50 made the play for North Carolina State and it's punt formation time for Chris Barr and Max uh, I think you tested the wind he'll be kicking into the wind. Well it's almost right across the field right even though it is a factor in kicking but it's directly across the field and it does kind of a tendency to keep the ball down. Ralph Stringer a fine punt returner is back deep and Barr hangs this one high. Stringer at the 31 yard line and whoa. Bernard Robinson nailed Stringer in his tracks. Now for the first time today we get a chance to see this highly touted North Carolina State offense. The quarterback one of the twin brothers Dave Bucky number 11 Ted Brown the sensational freshman 23. This is Adams. I beg your pardon. That was Ted Brown, number 23. Now, Timmy Johnson 
listed as a tailback is also in the same backfield. So we do not see Ricky Adams who's been starting at fullback number 44. The offensive line for North Carolina State. Bill Drushel, 77. Dan Ahern, 64. Lou Alcamo, 51. Tom Surface, 61. And Mike Fagan, 75. It is second and five at the Wolfpack, 35. First down for quarterback Dave Bucky. Now let's set the Penn State defensive line for you. The front four made up of Dennis Zmugin, 81, Ron Coder, 65, John Quinn, 90, and Ron Crosby, 64. North Carolina State with a first down at the 41-yard line of North Carolina State. This is Timmy Johnson getting about five yards on first down. And Max, uh, first impressions here, uh, would show that North Carolina State has not only a good reputation, but they are able to back it up. They are. They're coming off the ball, and it's typical of Penn State all year. The first drive of some of these teams they've had a little trouble with till they really get the pattern of things, but I think you'll see them buckle down once they get a little closer to the goal line. Second down and four at the 47. Bucky on a keeper, and Ron Crosby makes a fine play to limit the North Carolina State quarterback to just one yard and it's going to be third down and three the Penn State linebackers and secondary the linebackers Ron Hostetler 38 Greg Buttle 67 Jim Rosecrans 33 Kurt Allerman 53 and we'll give you the defensive backs in a moment right now we have an official timeout as Ron Crosby for maybe it has to be uh, an equipment adjustment at any rate Ron Crosby went to the far sidelines and we can round out this secondary for you Tom O'Dell number 10 the one defensive halfback Mike Johnson, number 45, the other, and Gary Peter Kusky, number 42, is the safety man. Ricky Knowles, number 80, is in at tight end for North Carolina State. In fact, they have both of them in there. Pat Hovance, I believe, is going to stay in in a short yardage situation, and it will be third down and three when we're ready to go again. And Bill Banks, number 85, has replaced Crosby at a defensive end. North Carolina State third and four at the NC State 47. Great pass to brother Don Bucky. Twin brother Don has a first down at the Penn State 39. Max. Well, the Bucky brothers, they should know each other pretty good. And you see here a good pass and a, and a good catch. And, of course, that's a combination they're going to have to look at all day because these kids have led this team uh, for the last three years. First down, North Carolina State. This is Adams. Fine open field tackle by Tom O'Dell, but first down, North Carolina State at the 28 yard line, and Ted Brown is elusive. He is, Ray. He made some moves there that you don't really normally see from a freshman, so they're going to have to really watch this young man or he can break it all the way. First down, North Carolina State. Knowles is wide left. Bucky is wide left. Marshall, the wing back, is to the right. This is Adams. Adams runs into Alderman and Rosecrans. Ray, the Penn State defense is shifting, and that time uh, North Carolina State almost caught him right in the shift. So as a result, they caught him a little bit off balance. They're going to have to do that shifting a little sooner. I'm going to have to remind myself to quit saying Ricky Adams. He hasn't played at all yet, the regular fullback. It's Brown and Johnson. Brown 23 and Timmy Johnson 21. It's second down and seven. <laughs> Now that time it's Timmy Johnson getting it down to around the 21 yard line and it's going to be third and four and Ron Coder the State College senior made the tackle. The tight ends are alternating with play selections from head coach Lou Holtz and his staff. It's going to be Ricky Knowles in now as Hovance comes to the sidelines. Marshall the flanker goes left. Don Bucky number 19 goes right. Third and four North Carolina State Penn State 21 yard line. I believe 
but Bucky was able to recover the ball as Greg Buttle made a fine play. Well, when you reach that 20 yard line, you know Penn State's coming at you. He did drop the ball right here, as you can see, and it bounced right back to him. So that was a very good, fortunate bounce for Bucky. Jay Sherrill is going to try a field goal of about 41 yards. Don Bucky is the holder. It has the distance, but it's wide to the right. So Penn State takes over. So with the score, Penn State nothing and North Carolina State nothing. We'll be back right after this. The Penn State Television Network would like to say thank you to literally thousands and thousands of you who have sent us letters of enthusiasm telling us that you've enjoyed our telecast. We've tried very hard on our telecast this year, and we were indeed most anxious to find out what your comments were, your reactions. And you've sent us not only many thousands of letters of commendation, but some great suggestions as well. Now, as our way of saying thanks to you, for every Nittany Lion fan, we have this Penn State tassel cap and this decal. And if you'd like to continue to show your support, all you have to do to get your tassel cap and decal is send $5 to support Penn State Football Television Network, Gateway Towers, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and don't forget the zip code, of course, 15222. That's $5 for your tassel cap and decal to support Penn State Football Television Network, Gateway Towers, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15222. Penn State, first and 10, Penn State 20, after a North Carolina State field goal attempt missed out. This is Cephalo. Cephalo gets three or four yards where he ran into Jim Henderson, a defensive tackle, number 90. Incidentally, in looking over this North Carolina State roster, a lot of players from the general Penn State area, you might say. Uh, we have Dan Ahern from Freeport, New York. We have Bill Cower from Pittsburgh. Bill Druschel from Greensburg. Glenn Jennis from Pittsburgh. Second down and six Penn State at the Penn State 24. Cephalo. Defensive halfback Ralph Springer prevented Cephalo from even more yardage as Cephalo gives Penn State its first first down of the game at the Penn State 39. Jimmy Cephalo showed some of the things that we've been looking for most of the year, uh, so we'll probably see a lot of him today. Petrol. Ron Banther and Richard Wheeler of the secondary make the tackle, but Max, good blocking. Gee, if you look at the hole there, you see a hole you could drive a truck through by Rafferty and Benson, and if they blow them out of there like this, you'll see a great ground game today by Penn State. First down at the North Carolina State 46-yard line. Barbenchak wide left. Larry Suey was not listed as the starter today. We expected to see Dwayne Taylor, who missed the Maryland game because of an ankle injury. But so far, Suey has gone all the way at fullback. Gain of about four, second down six. And there is the mascot for the Wolfpack. Petchel. He's close to a first down at the NC State 36 yard line. Middle guard Tom Higgins made the tackle. You know, Woody Petchels, as I said before, has been getting a lot more playing time with the injury of Rich Motti, and he's showing here he's making very good yardage, and of course, Rich Motti may be able to help him out a little bit today. Third and less than one for a first down at the North Carolina State, 36 and a half. Six and a half minutes left first quarter, no score. Petchel, wing back left. Cephalo is nailed for a loss. Let's see who made that fine play. Ron Banther, number 82. And this was 
he broke right through the Penn State offensive line and got him while he had no chance to make a move back just after he received the handoff. There's not much he can do about that. Loss on the play back to the 39. Chris Barr, if he makes this field goal of 57 yards, will tie an NCAA record for field goals in a season. But it's way short into the win. North Carolina State takes over at the North Carolina State 20 yard line. So with the score Penn State nothing North Carolina State nothing we'll be back right after this. We move to further action with Penn State in control of the football. We move to further action with North Carolina State in control of the football. We move to action later in the first quarter. We move to further action in the same drive. North Carolina State with the first down at the North Carolina State 20 yard line after Chris Barr was short into the wind with a 57 yard field goal attempt. And now I'm happy to say Max that Ricky Adams who I've been trying to get in the game is in there now number 44 at fullback Ted Brown number 23 the left halfback. This is Brown. Ron Hostetler, Greg Buttle would not allow Brown to get outside. Result, no gain, second down 10. Well, there's outside speed there, Ray. This young man does have the speed. He's going to be uh, troublesome to keep contained today. Don Bucky goes left. Elijah Marshall goes left on second and 10 North Carolina State. Adams gets maybe a yard. Dennis Smugin played that very tough, number 81. I think there's a flag on the play, Ray. It looked as though uh, probably offsides against North Carolina State. Penn State has the option here. The play gained a yard and a half. About eight and a half. You take 38 and a half. Did you plan it? Sounds good. We'll take All right, All right. right tackle and a white offside. Decline. You are hearing the voice of referee Bill Parkinson, who has a wireless microphone on today. And from time to time, you will hear, in this case, Penn State make the decision to decline the penalty. It is third down and eight and a half. This is Adams. Oh, what's wrong with me? I keep saying Adams. That's Ted Brown, and he has a first down. Let's take a look at Ted Brown. He's definitely the workhorse today, and you can see why. He broke a tackle right here to make the first down from Rosecrans, and from there on, he got a big first down for the Wolfpack. First down, North Carolina State, as they get out of a third down hole. It's at the North Carolina State 33 yard line. Bumble. Fumble by Ted Brown. Hostetler gets the football. I'll tell you, Ray, you never want to drop a ball when the blue shirts are around because they'll come up with it. And you can see why there's Hostetler and a host of others waiting to pick up that fumble. Big hit there was delivered by Ron Crosby. This is Woody Petchel breaking tackles. Woody Petchel broke two or three tackles and gained about six yards. It's going to be second and four at the North Carolina State 20.
Four minutes left to play, first quarter, no score. Penn State threatening, second and four, North Carolina State 20. Petchel again. This time, a fine play by tackle Doug Carter. Incidentally, some of the other, some more of the North Carolina State players and Pennsylvania hometowns. We have Jim Henderson from Apollo. We have Tom Higgins, their fine middle guard from Colonia, New Jersey. We have Pat Hovance from Warren, Ohio. Tom Linder of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Matt, Russell Matt of Jeanette. Third and three. Petrol. First down. Defensive halfback Eddie Poole made the tackle. You'll see here, Mark Thomas pulls out, makes a good block. They're, the blocking at the hole today has just been sensational for Penn State. Richard Wheeler, the safety man, number 28, finally pinned Petchel down, but it's a first down at the North Carolina State 14-yard line. So he... Argenta, Tom Rafferty, and Brad Benson threw a hole in that line, and Suey did what he does best. He's a strong kid. He broke two tackles at the goal line and got it in for the first score of the day. Ray, it'd be a good day to put your pads on because you can run through those holes with nobody touching you. <laughs> Chris Barr tries for the seventh Penn State point. It's there. With the score, Penn State 7, North Carolina State nothing. We'll be back right after this. Has he tried to take advantage of the NC State defense by coming out, line up, then shifting their offense? This last possession, I think you saw what you're going to see the rest of the day. The Penn State team came out, got set in the formation, and just ran the basic Penn State offense at the NC State defense. And I think it's going to be a great game. Now, back to you, right? Chris Barr to kick off to, whoop, the ball fell off the tee. The deep man for North Carolina State. Ralph Stringer, number nine, and Ted Brown, number 23. Ray, I think you can see what happened there. The wind is really blowing out there today. This is Ted Brown. The freshman from High Point, North Carolina, brings the kickoff back to pretty good field position. 32-yard line of North Carolina State where defensive back Bill Crummy made the rundown. We asked Joe O'Hora, one of the Penn State uh, coaches, about this uh, Ted Brown. Jim, rather. It's Jim a veteran O'Hara. defensive team. Uh, I think their middle guard, number 50, Higgins, is probably as fine a nose man that we'll have seen all year. And uh, their two tackles are, are fairly big boys in the 240, 245-pound range. Just as we uh, came back after listening to Jim O'Hara, Johnny Evans came in as a new quarterback. Now, he has been a quarterback sometimes this year, a tailback most of the early season, and he's their fine, fine punter. This now, he's the quarterback, number 10. Dave Moody, number 7, is in as a new wide receiver instead of Don Bucky. Second down and 10. One 
yards. Greg Buttle and John Quinn limit Evans on an option play to about a yard. Did, were the receivers pretty well covered, Max? I think they were, right? However, I do think they probably got Evans in for his running ability because he was a tailback early in the year and ran the ball quite a bit. So evidently they're going to try to run the option with Evans in there. There was no gain, by the way, so it's third and ten at the 33. Marshall, the flanker, is wide left. Blitz by Rosecrans. A great, great effort by Evans. He got the ball to Timmy Johnson, where Hostetler finally made the tackle. He threw the ball extremely high, and I thought possibly a chance for an interception, but he had a man wide open in the middle, and it turned out to be a heck of a ball play. So it's a first down for the Wolfpack at the 47-yard line. We're looking at Lou Holtz, the head coach of North Carolina State. A minute 10 left in the first quarter. Penn State leading 7-0, but the Wolfpack moving. This is Ted Brown. Oh, you're right, Max. He's dangerous on every play. He has those real basic fast moves that continually move up field. He doesn't waste any time juking sideways. He jukes and moves up the field, and that, of course, is what made a lot of great backs like Gail Sears and Jimmy Brown and the rest of them. Gain of eight, second and two at the Penn State 45. Kurt Allerman breaks through to nail Evans for a loss. Kurt Allerman, Kurt Allerman has done such a job since he's become a regular in there. He played a great game last week and a week before that, and he's just getting better every week. Loss on the play to the 48-yard line. It is third and five. Don Bucky is back in the game and is wide right. Brown went in motion. Ron Hostetler. Ron Coder. With the score. Penn State 7, North Carolina State nothing. We'll be back right after this. Ready? Penn State was unable to move the ball, so they punted to North Carolina State. North Carolina State was unable to move the ball, so they punted to Penn State. We move to further action. There was no further scoring, and the quarter ended with the score, Penn State 7, North Carolina State nothing. After the great Penn State defensive play, it's fourth and 20, and Johnny Evans, who has averaged 44 yards a punt, is punting to Rich Motty. Motty out of action now for a couple of weeks, is back in there today as a punt return man. Marker down, might have been offside Penn State. A marker down. I think Penn State may have been offside. It's good to see Rich Motty back in there. He was their leading uh, punt returner and kickoff returner earlier in the year, and since his injury, they've missed him on these uh, special teams. He makes a big difference in their punt and kickoff return. Referee Bill Parkinson indicates Penn State offside. Five-yard penalty means now that Evans We'll have an additional five yards to work with as we look across the way to the Penn State bench and the familiar Joe Paterno. What he does so very well, which is pace. 
You made some great calls last week, Ray. If you ever give a coach a credit for a victory, I think the fact that they kicked off to those people last week after winning the toss and, and taking the win was a big factor in that game. And of course, it turned out that those probably those two field goals early in the game were the difference in the game. After a five yard Penn State penalty for being offside it is fourth down and punt formation again for Evans Odell has joined Monty and a comparatively short punt out of bounds at the Penn State 30 and that's where the offense will take over and we're going to see Tom Donovan in the game now at wing back and I believe we're going to have Steve Geis at tailback. They've been giving Steve Geis more playing time all week. He's a good strong runner. He looked uh, good last week against Maryland. And we'll have Dwayne Taylor in now for the first time today at fullback. They missed Dwayne Taylor. He has a very fast start and he gets in that hole quick and that's the kind of back you like to see. In there. On first down Andrus is going for Barton Jack off his right hand. At the 27 yard line of North Carolina State, Barvin Chack couldn't quite get to it. It was almost a touchdown. Actually, the pass was thrown pretty good. When uh, Barvin Chack made his break, he appeared to slow down a little because he didn't think you were going to get the ball. And of course, that's a cardinal sin because you've got to keep running. Had he had run full speed, I think it'd have been six points. Second and 10 at the Penn State 20. Barvin Chack and Donovan are wide right. This is Geis. Richard Wheeler, the safety man, finally nails Steve Geis, the sophomore from Lock Haven. You'll watch here behind the blocking here. And these holes that George Reiner and Mark Thomas are opening up are really something on this offensive line. And of course, Geis ran very good. 48 yard line of Penn State, first and 10. Dwayne Taylor. He picks up about three yards before he ran into Doug Carter, number 91, Tom Prongay, number 71, the two North Carolina State tackles. Speedster uh, Scott Fitzke just checked in. When he's in there, sometimes they really like to get a bomb off to him. So we'll keep a good, we'll keep a sharp eye on Scott Fitzke. He's number 46, and he's wide left. This is Geis, and he's very close to a first down as the Penn State offensive line is doing just a tremendous job. He's close enough uh, to a first down to call for an official timeout and a measurement for the down. Incidentally, to complete a rundown of the North Carolina State players from Roughly what we might say this part of the country. We have Tom Surface, a starting offensive guard from Beaver Falls. Where the quarterback Kevin Scanlon from Beaver Falls and Surface from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. We asked Coach John Chuckrin about the uh, about the defense. It's a veteran defensive team. Uh, I think their middle guard, number 50, Higgins, is probably as fine a nose man that we'll have seen all year and uh, their two tackles are are fairly big boys in the 240 245 pound range first down and this time Geis is very fortunate he broke a tackle by Jim Henderson and wound up with a gain and it could have been a loss of one Steve Geis as I said earlier is a strong type back he hits he bounces off of a uh, his blockers and they get started again as you saw him do it there. Fitzky now goes to the sidelines and Dick Barbinchak number 16 is back in Barbinchak to the right Donovan to the left second and seven at the 39 of North Carolina State. One, two, three, go. Oh, Intended for tight end Dave Stutz. It's going to be third and seven with 1230 left to play in the first half and Penn State leading by seven nothing. Mickey Schuler, the sophomore from Enola brings in the play now. Oh, 
John Andres Ray for most of the years had a little problem with overthrowing and I don't know whether it's because it's a little anxious it usually happens early in the game and he seemed a little anxious there. Third and seven. First down to Donovan. I think you'll see the tight end gets out here and he is really open and uh, Andrus gets the ball right on the money. I think it's Mickey Schuler makes a catch here for the first down. He must have made some kind of a move Max to be that wide open. Well evidently that or a defensive mistake Ray because he was really open. This is Taylor. And he ran into Tom Higgins the nose guard or middle guard if you prefer and result is a gain of just about a yard. It's going to be second and nine. Lou Holtz the coach at North Carolina State has uh, had a very very successful record there with the Wolf Pack. His team has won three in a row now after early season problems and has a six and three record. Steve Geis. Steve Geis is starting off today like he's going to have himself a hundred yard day and as usual the holes in those lines are tremendous Mark Thomas Ron Argenta and you see the result when you get that good blocking right at the hole and that's going to be pin, uh, North Carolina State to stay in this game is going to have to shore up that defensive line 12 yard line of North Carolina State another Penn State first down Taylor this time. And at most about a yard and a half where he ran into tackle Jim Henderson and Tom Higgins the middle guard and Higgins has been on in on a high percentage of the tackles made by the North Carolina State defense. Second down eight at the North Carolina State ten capacity crowd and a just beautiful afternoon here at University Park. Geis the tailback Taylor the fullback Donovan and Barvin wide to the right. Geis. Oh, he is strong. He is. You very seldom see uh, a Geis. You don't see him get knocked back very often. This is a mark of a back that hardly ever loses yards. He's always falls forward. If he gets into that line, he makes some yardage. The ball is at the five yard line as we come back live. It is third and three yards for first down, and of course, five yards for a touchdown. Ten minutes left in the first half. Penn State leading 7 nothing. Double wing. This is Donovan. Oh, he's close for first down. Ralph Stringer, the defensive halfback, made the tackle. Forward progress uh, would appear to be very close to first down. I think that was almost an inside reverse Ray the play was a reverse designed to go inside and it it was evidently a pretty good call even though it was only third and three because there is chance of losing yardage but as it turned out it's very close to a first down. Any part of the ball you see that whole lot of I tell you that this much. Fourth down less than one. Suey is in at fullback, number 35. Geis stays in at tailback. Stutz and Schuler, the double tight end offense. Fourth and less than one, Max. Right. Most of the time, Ray, in this situation, uh, Coach Paterno has is, is, is let the boys go for it. And that's, that's, there's a reason for that, of course. And normally he's made it all year. He hasn't been held all year on a fourth down play. Geis, he has a first down inside the one. Not hard to see why Geis is getting a lot of playing time. He is strong. He's a good short yardage man. With him and Petchel and Maudie all well, this team is getting better down the stretch. First and goal inside the one. Woody Petchel comes in. Geis goes out. Andrus. And he's in there. 
So Penn State moves ahead by 13 nothing with 846 left to play in the first half. Ray, that was John Andrews' second touchdown of the year, and uh, of course, I'm sure that'll make him happy. Bar Barman Chack will hold for Barr. Barr is on target again. So, with the score, Penn State 14 and North Carolina State nothing. We'll be back right after this. If you have a head for cars, head for Dodge. This charger comes with a new low price. Cold Park's easy in my best night. Ram Charger, four-wheel drive for traction. Sportsman gets the crowd to the action. You have a head for cars, head for Dodge. My four-door Dodge holds a whole carpool. My big Dodge wagon holds a nursery school. This Dart has a trunk about two miles wide. This Ram Charger has a cooler inside. If you have a head for cars, head for your local Dodge dealer. Welcome to the Pennsylvania Lottery's Lucky Lotto Game, where you tune in and play at home for big money. Over 120,000 weekly winners with prizes to $10,000. And finalists compete on the tube for up to $5,000 plus $500 a month for life. It's Play TV, so buy your $1 tickets and tune in Thursday nights. Lucky Lotto. You could really clean up. Dave Robinson is on the playing field right now with Tor Toretti. Gentlemen, what do you think? Well, since Ray would say that last drive, to sum it up in a word, Tor, I'd say, Geist was nice. What do you say? Right, Dave. That was a very good drive put together by a good running attack with a clutch pass here and there. Geist uh, surprised me by coming into the game at that stage, but I think Joe took advantage of the strength of Geist and decided to run that ball at him, and it eventually ended up in a long touchdown drive. All right, now back to you, Ray, with the kickoff. Okay, bar. Over the fence, into the crowd. There was a 60-yard field goal, right? <laughs> so North Carolina State, with no opportunity for a run back from either Ted Brown or Ralph Stringer, who were back there, the Wolfpack will go back to Dave Bucky as quarterback now. They went with Johnny Evans the last time they had the football. It's back to Dave Bucky. Brother Don is wide left. Elijah Marshall is off to the right. This is for his brother. Dave Bucky intended for Don Bucky, the twin brothers from Akron, Ohio, defending Mike Johnson incomplete. We would remind you that announcers on this telecast are contracted by Total Communication Systems, and any use of this program without the consent of Total Communication Systems is prohibited. Ricky Adams, number 44, checks in at fullback. Ted Brown stays in at left halfback. This is second and ten. The ball batted in the air. Incomplete pass. John Quinn batted it in the air, almost caught it for an interception. Boy, this was very close to being a big play for Penn State. The ball's batted up. Right back and hit it for incomplete. a moment, and Bucky knocked it loose. Of course, it was an incomplete pass. Now it is third and ten at the North Carolina State 20 with 8.32 left in the half and Penn State leading 14 to nothing. Bucky to the left, wing back Marshall to the right. Right on target to Don Bucky with Gary Peter Tusky making the tackle. Let's take a look at Don Bucky. He's the less heralded of the two brothers, but definitely a good pass receiver. You see, he puts a good move on Johnson. He's wide open, and, and his brother's right on the button. You know, Ray, when I was playing with Green Bay as a split end, I used to wake up dreaming that I had a twin brother as a quarterback. <laughs> First down, North Carolina State at the Wolfpack 34. On the run pass intended for wingback Elijah Marshall incomplete and I think Ron Crosby may have tipped it. Elijah Marshall has been their deep threat. I'm surprised really they haven't tried to get the ball deep to Marshall yet. 
Second down, 10 on the incomplete pass. Marshall goes out to the right. Dave Moody, number seven, is wide left. Greg Buttle with a beautiful play. Nails Bucky from behind. Greg Buttle went inside a block here, which is you have to be an outstanding lineman to go inside that block and still catch a ball here, but he did it, and that, of course he is one of the best linebackers in the country. Now it is third down eight at the North Carolina State 36-yard line. A true All-America candidate, Greg Buttle from Linwood, New Jersey. Steve Wanamaker is in at linebacker now, number 47. Marshall gets a first down at the 46-yard line. Tom O'Dell ran him out of bounds, but say, Max, uh, Marshall ran a good pattern that time. He did, and I think something of note is the fact is how well Bucky throws the ball on the run. As you see here, he's right on target, throwing it, rolling out to the opposite first side down. of his arm, and that's a mark of a real good passer. So the drive stays alive at the North Carolina State 46-yard line. Don Bucky is back in the game, number 19, the receiver. Oh, that, Ted Brown broke one tackle. He gets, all oh, about four yards to midfield. North Carolina State's offense has been averaging about 400 yards a game. Uh, with 400 yards a game, you can expect somewhere along the line you're going to see some break for this Wolfpack team. Second and six. And there's that Brown again. Apparently stopped. What a great, great second effort. All right, you can't pronounce him dead until you see the body laying on the floor. And boy, he... Right there, looked like he was down, and he made an extra four or five yards. This is very close to a first down, close enough to call for another measurement. Six and a half minutes left in the first half. Penn State leading 14 0. You got this much? Third down. This young lady, one of the cheerleaders to follow the Wolf Pack. Third down, less than one at the Penn State 44 and a half. This is the fullback with the first down, Ricky Adams. Ricky Adams Yesterday, Joe Paterno, Max, I noted was quoted as saying that the game would be won by the team with a defense that would bend but not break. And Penn State's done a lot of bending so far, but no breaking. They've done that all year, Ray. But boy, when you get down to that 20 yard line, you better look out. This is uh, Ted Brown. Alderman and Crosby made the tackle, but North Carolina State right now with an excellent drive underway. Time is of perhaps some concern. 5.40 left in the first half. You know, Ray, they're making that uh, six, seven, and eight yards on first down, and that puts tremendous pressure on the defense because now they can run, they can pass, they can run a reverse. They're not limited to anything they can do in their offense. Second and three at the Penn State 35. This is the fullback, Adams, and another North Carolina State first down. Brown has carried nine times and has already gained 55 yards. That's right, Ray. And Steve, uh, Geis for Penn State has gained 51 yards and six carries. So we're having a real good ground game from both sides today. Bucky and Marshall wide to the right. The ball at the Penn State 29. This time, Brown is met at the pass by John Quinn and Greg Buttle. Result gain of at most a yard. 
you know, when Quinn and Buttle hit you, you really don't have to guess. You can hear it. You can hear it right here. Buttle really puts a boom on Brown, and that's what you have to do in that situation and make them think a little bit before they stick their nose in there. Second down and nine. Moody to the right. Bucky to the left. This is Adams, the fullback. He's around the 23 or 4 yard line. Or Ted Brown is met by Coder. Tackled by Coder. And Bucky. here is one of the big third down plays of the first half. Third down, four or five yards away from a first down at the Penn State 24. Don Bucky fell down. He, I think he was a target. Uh, do you agree, Max? Uh, he was, Ray. And Tom O'Dell played that just beautiful. You know, Tom O'Dell is having such a great year. He's laid like four or five interceptions, four or five fumble recovers, and he grades out every week at somewhere around 90, and that's very high. With the score, Penn State 14 and North Carolina State nothing. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> 